How are we doing YouTube? Nick Pratap here from Next Gen Rehabilitation and in today's video I'm going to be going over the pathway to becoming a clinical exercise physiologist. I've been getting this question quite a bit from, uh, from some of the viewers so I was going to dive into it today. Um, I got started uh, with my path uh, to becoming an exercise physiologist through my degree. So I got a degree uh, in a Bachelor's of Science in Kinesiology with a concentration in Active Health and Rehabilitation. Um, and during my degree, one of our classes uh, offered practicum. So the practicum I chose was to become or to go and uh, be involved in a cardiac rehab setting. And immediately I was blown away. I thought, <clears throat> this is pretty cool. You know, you're able to take medication. Um, you're able to take, uh, you know, individuals that have been that suffered some sort of heart issue, valves, bypasses, um, stenting, um, complete uh, uh, heart surgery. Um, look at their medications, look at their test results, um, take all these factors and, and prescribe an exercise program for them. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I got to learn a lot from the exercise specialists there, uh, the nurses I was working with. And then once I finished, I wanted to continue on. So I joined a local uh, organization, the YMCA Cardiac Rehab Program, and I started working as an, uh, a fitness trainer there in a cardiac rehab setting. So as a fitness trainer, uh, I was leading a lot of group exercise sessions, aerobics, uh, step classes, we were doing uh, group exercise classes with weights, um, cool downs with stretching, uh, breathing exercises, balance exercises, and it really uh, trained me to, to be able to take my level of training, which, you know, when you're training individuals in their 20s and 30s, it's, it's a lot higher, and you have to really dial it back down for obvious reasons for heart patients, right? So um, gaining knowledge in that sense, um, starting to understand uh, certain protocols when it comes to training heart patients, um, working with exercise physiologists and some nurses, um, some variables to look out for. So it started uh, piquing my interest a little bit more. <clears throat> and at this point, while I was still going through school, I knew um, once I got out, I wanted to try uh, uh, and, and pursue this as a career. So uh, once I got my degree, um, I went off and I challenged the exam. So I wrote my exam through the American College of Sports Medicine, um, Clinical Exercise Physiologist Certification. Um, and after I passed that exam, I was able to go off and, and get a job as a casual uh, working at a hospital. All right. So before I jump into that, just remember there are a couple of prerequisites you need for this exam. One of them being you need um, um, some cl uh, clinical experience. Now, that number does vary depending on if you're a you have a bachelor's degree or a master's degree. And you can go on the ACSM website for that. You need certain prerequisite courses. Um, if you have a bachelor's degree in kinesiology or exercise science, that mostly is sufficient enough. Just double check those courses. And you also need a certification in first aid, CPR, and AED. Um, so if you have those three factors, you're eligible to write the exam. Now, once I passed my exam, I started working as a casual. And working as a casual is a good way to mesh the medical and the exercise field. Um, I wasn't able to really, I mean, I got to dabble in angiograms and echocardiograms in the, in the y, with the YMC a little bit, but when I got to the hospital, this is when we were able to pull up uh, patients' charts, uh, look at their cardiac history, look at their test results, and really start um, working on building an exercise uh, prescription for them based on their meds, their test results, how they perform on the stress tests, uh, that sort of thing. You're also exposed to uh, working with doctors, cardiologists, nurses, and you can really pick their brains and, and advance your own knowledge on, you know, proper techniques and training methodologies when it comes to certain heart patients, because some are more complicated than others, depending on them having different comorbidities, diabetes, COPD, heart issues, past history of cancer, um, that sort of thing. So those uh, balance issues, elderly, right, those issues become more challenging, um, but that's what makes uh, this job uh, very unique. So after doing that for about two years, um, and I remember as a casual, you're not working steadily. So I was still working uh, with the YMCA, um, doing exercise training. And then, you know, you get in the call the, the odd time for the hospital shifts, if you're coming for sick leaves, maternity leaves, that sort of thing. Um, after a few years, I was able to uh, land a position working uh, as a permanent um, uh, clinical exercise physiologist. And that's what I'm doing right now. So. Um, as a permanent, um, I'm not working uh, as much with the exercise uh, classes, leading the classes. I'm doing more of the medical management. So, I'm, uh, again, making sure the, the participants safe, they're following their exercise guidelines. I'm going over how they should be training um, based on, you know, their medications and their, and their uh, uh, cardiac history. 
I'm going over uh, target heart rates with them, the Borg scale rating of perceived exertion. And every week I'm trying to progress them, right? Every week I grab their charts. Um, I'm leading a couple classes with about 15 uh, patients in each class. And every week I go through each one of their charts to make sure they're performing, right? Are they uh, doing the correct MAC values? Are they doing the correct uh, target heart rates? Um, if they're not, what machine do we need to increase? And if they're getting any symptoms and whatnot, what machines do we need to take down in intensity? So it becomes a little bit of a juggling act. Obviously, our goal is to progress them as we uh, move along in the program. Um, but you know, hiccups come up along the way and we kind of deal with them as they happen. So uh, if I had to give any advice, it's get started early. Start with a practicum, some sort of volunteer experience while you're in school to see if this is something you actually want to do. Um, and if it is, try to make as many connections as you can, right? While you're volunteering, try to get to know um, you know, sit down with the doctors, the nurses, uh, pick their brains a little bit, you know, get their advice on getting into cardiac rehab, build up your hours so when you're ready, you can write the exam <clears throat> and then uh, start looking for work because uh, in this field, at least where I, I live, it is a little bit more challenging. Um, it's a niche market um, when it comes to clinical exercise physiology. There are a lot of exercise physiologists out there working with sports teams, but not uh, too many working in the cardiac rehab setting. It's an amazing job, but it can be difficult to find work sometimes. So definitely look in your area to see if it is available. And remember, you got to start slow, right? Uh, making as many connections as you can, talk to as many people as you can. Um, and eventually, if you're persistent enough, um, your name will continue to come up and, and eventually you'll be able to land a job. So hopefully this uh, video helped out. If you have any more questions, uh, feel free to give me uh, uh, send me a message. And for now, this is Nick Pratap from Next Gen Rehabilitation.